What's up guys, this is Kaylin Carr, outside sunny Southern New Hampshire University, and today they're sending me back to school. I'm gonna sit down with Professor Pamela Cohen to see if some of the stuff I learned on the soccer field actually works in a math class. Let's check this out. So I've heard that you've said your goal is to demystify math for your students. You may have your hands full with me today. <laughs> uh, what does that mean though? I really think that it's just building self-confidence and having students believe that they can do it and then they can. So what different disciplines of math apply to soccer? There's math all over the place in soccer. There's lots of geometry with the shape of the field and the shape of the ball. There's physics involved and calculus and vectors in the flight of the ball and the path of the ball. Uh, it, it gets pretty complicated pretty quickly. <laughs> okay, well, we'll steer clear the vectors and the, the calculus for today. There are a couple of things. One is that everybody thinks that when you kick a soccer ball, it goes straight. It really, naturally, the path it takes is a curve. It's a parabola. Because of gravity and Bernoulli principles, which is what really holds an airplane up and how the air goes across the top of the wing and across the bottom of the wing, well, the same thing happens with a soccer ball. Uh, the molecules are going across the top of the ball and the bottom of the ball, and they're making it curve a little bit, and it, there's, it's spinning. The path of the, of the ball is very mathematical and it's somewhat geometric. Really, we talk about parabola and that's geometry. So many times I've heard coaches tell me to play in triangles or we'll do triangle passing drills. What is it about triangles that are so fundamental to soccer? Well, in geometry, triangles are very rigid shapes. They use that term rigid because they don't collapse and they, they stand up and I, I guess maybe like a defensive, kind of like a castle defending itself against enemies. So if you move forward or backwards in that triangular form, you can't break through those, those lines as opposed to being straight across or in a, a square formation, there are too many places where you can break through and, and the ball could be intercepted from you or taken away. I was taught in college that, uh, this thing called the piston theory. When one player steps up to confront an attacker, the other player is supposed to drop back and provide cover. How does that have any math principles in it? That looks to me on the surface, and I see what you're saying, but if I followed all of those different players, I think we could draw those triangles again with everybody, the next person dropping down, it's a new triangle, and the next person dropping down, it's a new triangle. So I think the piston movement is really just trying to create the next corner of that triangle. I've learned a ton today. I was nervous coming in. This has definitely been the easiest uh, or less intimidating math classes I've taken in a long time, so. I've done my job. Yeah, so thank you so much for your time. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Okay.